Now that we've discussed the principles of the scarf cut, back cut and hinge wood, it's time to put the theory into practice and see how to actually carry out the job. It's often easiest to start the scarf with the bottom cut, so you can get it level and running exactly at right angles to the desired direction of fall. However, some operators prefer to start with the angle cut, particularly under certain conditions. Your trainer will talk to you about the most appropriate cut to begin with for the conditions that you're working in. For our example, we'll start the scarf with the bottom cut. Hold the saw comfortably so you can position it accurately for the first cut. Use the gunning sights on the saw to line up the body of the saw with the point that's exactly parallel to where you want the tree to fall. Then move your body into position to make the first cut. You can check the cut for level before you go too far by stopping the saw in the cut and sighting it from the front. Once you're satisfied, continue to cut to a depth of between a quarter and a third of the diameter of the tree. Then make the top cut so that both cuts match up evenly at the scarf line. Use your axe to clean up the scarf line and to check that you haven't overcut either of the cuts. If the cuts don't meet up properly, make sure you fix them before you move on to the back cut. If it turns out that the top cut ends up being too high and the scarf would be too deep, you can split out the scarf block and leave a step at the back. As long as the top and bottom cuts extend into the tree by the same amount, this is an acceptable way of getting out of the problem. To set out for the back cut, mark the points it should finish at with a little stick on either side, so you've got something to work to. For this tree, the inside of the cut will finish 50mm up and 50mm back from the scarf line, so a 50mm wide wedge is handy for marking it out. Make an incision with your screwdriver and push the stick in. When you do the back cut, make sure you're in a position that will let you finish the cut on the safest side of the tree. You'll already have established which side is the safest side when you carried out your initial assessment of the tree and decided where the escape route would go. Never walk across the back of the tree to get to your escape route, just in case the tree kicks backwards. When the tree begins to fall, that is, when the fibres in the hinge wood start to snap, pull the saw out and quickly walk down your escape route. Make sure you regularly look back to check for flying limbs or hangers that might fall from above. Stay well clear until all movement has stopped and you're sure that there are no loose branches about to fall. So far we've covered the standard scarf, which is the one you're likely to use most often. However, there are other types of scarfs that can be used in particular situations. For example, the Humboldt, or reverse scarf, is often used for cutting saw logs, because it lets you get a bit more recovery out of the log. It can also be used when falling a tree uphill, because it helps to ensure that the tree doesn't slip backwards over the stump. And the 90 degree scarf can be used on trees that have a very large butt swell. The depth is determined by how deep you need to go to cover two-thirds of the diameter of the trunk. <laughs>